Hello guys and welcome to the review of the Ontario SK5 Blackbird. It's a really nice little sort of camp cross survival knife is kind of how they're marketing it. And um, yeah, it's a good one. 154cm steel micarta handle designed by Paul Schneider, Schneider from uh, Hedgehog Leatherworks. Uh, we're going to take this and we're going to make some outdoor um, stew with it. Let's uh, get into it. First of all, I'll just show you this knife against some other knives so you get a rough idea of how it is. I'll show you sort of length as well as in thickness against some other um, you know, camp style or survival style fixed blade knives. I made this myself. So the flat sort of, um, I guess it is just a Kefart style blade shape, that complete spear point. Uh, it's good for a few things. Um, really good for, you know, your wood whittling and your, your, you know, you set down some wood against a stump or something and you carve downwards. You get a lot of space that you can actually draw through, so not too bad at all. You are getting quite an abrupt little belly though, which I did notice when I was cutting against a surface, just it's not ideal for that. You want something with a bit more of a swoosh, but, um, kind of everything in a knife blade. Uh, the 154cm steel is a great choice, especially if you are going to be doing lots of food prep tasks. You can just wash it under a tap, put it back in your sheath and it's probably going to be fine, whereas a carbon steel will start to sort of patina away or rust away uh, if you really sort of neglect it. Um, the handle is quite big and blocky. Um, I find it quite comfortable, but I could just see someone with even a slightly smaller hand than me probably finding it just a little bit, uh, a little bit large as well. Uh, so yeah, just a very, um, you know, it's kind of a bit of a traditional design meeting a few modern little touches, modern materials. Um, I really like it, it's a, it's a good knife. The sheath that it comes with is like a nylon style, uh, you know, pretty standard sheath, which is interesting because it's made by, you know, this knife's designed by one of those super complex leather sheath makers. But um, I'm sure that you can buy a hedgehog sheath for this knife that's probably amazing and will hold all of your fat wood and all the other little pouches and all that goodness in it as well. But factory sheath is absolutely fine, but it's just basic. It's, uh, it's uh, neither here nor there really. So before when I was going to go and batten that wood with a knife, I think, I'd, um, I think I would have done some damage to it. It just had that feeling about it. Uh, the thing about our Australian wood is, because um, we're a really dry country, um, the trees just don't grow straight up. Like it's, uh, they are survivors, all of our trees. It's, you have to be the, the gnarliest, nastiest tree to survive. So that sort of translates into a lot of our wood as well. Now I'll show some footage now of um, like some redwood that I've used in this fire here. Um, 
just having you know no no luck even with a you know a decent axe swing getting um, even a start of a split going and a lot of our wood is exactly like that so yeah battening if you're in you know somewhere where you just have straight up and down trees um, for sure it's probably fine but here you really have to double check what kind of wood you're about to club your knife through because uh, just the force of those twirls just pressing up against the flat surface of your knife blade can uh, often fail. <laughs> Try actually get some meat in there. Don't love how the celery and the <laughs> makes the water go like a, a diarrhea green, but hey, it's all good. Uh, edge retention on the knife has seen, seems pretty good so far. It's still quite sharp, even though I've been doing some slightly silly things like lifting up my pot lid with it. Um, and I've done all my food prep and my wood carving and a bit of splitting and stuff like that. It's 154 cm. It's going to hold, you know, a good length longer than, um, say, your 1095s that you might get uh, in other Ontario knives or you know SE or whatever knives. Um, it's going to hold a little bit longer than, say, your VG10 and your Falcon Evens as well. So um, it's a good, good steel choice. Um, there's a powdered version called um, RWL34 or CPM154, which does seem to have a little bit more edge retention and maybe even a little bit extra toughness. Uh, not to say that I've explicitly tested the toughness on this blade, it's just been uh, just more of a general user. Uh, the stain resistance is holding in well, I haven't washed it since I've used it or anything like that and um, it's doing really well from that point of view and overall I think it's a pretty good choice of blade. I would suggest if they wanted to make it more of a survival knife uh, they could perhaps um, uh, sabre grind it so have a flat point here and then another sort of um, flat grind going down there. Uh, the full flat does make it a little bit less um, great for, for battening which is something that some folks like to do with their survival knife. Um, with me specifically as I said before uh, the wood here is probably a bit much even for that using this sort of blade stock. Uh, you want something a little bit thicker um, if you want to start be you know really seriously smashing your wood through your, your log through your sorry your knife through uh, Australian logs at any rate um, but yeah uh, if you're in a place where you have just your more traditional types of wood the more just up and down simple grain woods then I think it'll be fine for those tasks as well I would prefer a little bit of extra bulk if we are using it for you know starting to be wedging prying type jobs Hmm. The meat's a little overdone, but certainly warms the heart. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed seeing this um, really nice little knife in action. This is probably, as I said, one of my favourite styles of knife, just the, the dual kind of camp knife. And this one does a really good job of that. Um, it's probably a little on the pricey side for what you can get. You can probably get some other stuff that's a little bit better um, for certain tasks, but just as an overall good knife, for sure. You can't really go wrong. I can't draw too much criticism of it. Um, really, as long as you use it within its within its spec, I think you'll do absolutely fine. And hey, even if you need to push it upwards a little bit into the more rugged territory, I reckon it'll be okay as well. But um, yeah, as an overall kind of camp kitchen cutting tool to wear on your belt, absolutely fine. Thanks for watching dudes and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.